Please stay. I just had the most god-awful cup of coffee I have ever had in my life. You've got to try it. I drank it at a local diner charging specialty prices like they didn't buy it from Costco three weeks ago in bulk, new three-pound size Folgers tubs. Not cans, tubs. Plastic versions of the ones that my great-grandfather used to spit in when I was a kid, boasting mountain-grown quality since 1850, his half full of saliva and cancer, whose threats amounted to little more than minced words when dementia beat his gums to the punch look. Eventually, we're all going to have to leave, but slow down. Stay a while. Let's not force it. Gigi used to shuffle down the hallway through shag carpet that covered the house with tentacles, or a 1,200 square foot trampoline, like Jesus, the only name that he never used in vain. Gliding over storms to take his friend's hand, the old man would float around the corner and high-five the grandkids with a thin-lipped grin like, child... You have no idea what life is. I want to find out. We had to jump to reach his hand, and the smack of our skin sounded like a pop tab cracking into the morning Budweiser he'd drink as religiously as you'd sip a cup of coffee at 7 a.m. He's all beautiful and weathered and leather-skinned, like maybe gutting so much of that dip throughout the years finally began challenging just how much a body can tolerate before it starts to break down. I know you ask yourself that same question all of the time. Spit it out. I'm still here. You're still here and still maybe as much of a miracle as here ever was in the first place. So let's not waste it. We're still here to make a memory today. Trying to cover up the taste with cinnamon and mocha powder, neither of which quite get the burn out, but we know how that goes. You've got enough experience with people trying to tame solar flares with band-aids to know that sprinkling platitudes onto the scars on your arms will not be enough to convince someone that life is beautiful. But perhaps the wonder of another human being actually subjecting himself to drink this cup for the sake of being in your presence will. Anyway, I'll tell you all about him if you want, but this cup of coffee, God, it is horrible. You've got to try it. I want to hear about your family. Tell me about your great-grandfather and how he got through the Great Depression, and tell me how you'll get through yours. This moment is a part of it. Breathe. I want to high-five my son's son, wearing whatever vintage is 65 years from now, with beauty and pain and wonder and presence written into the fault lines all over my face like I have made my mistakes. And the earthquakes are real, but they shape you, and the ravines created are gorgeous places to let the sun cast its shadows through. We can hold one another's hands in the process. I'll let you squeeze until mine breaks if you must, but don't let go. Tell me about the love of your life and what color her eyes are, and whether the tint seems to change depending upon what she's wearing that day. 
My wife's fluctuate between special dark and milk chocolate, and she is worth living for. Please stay. I know you need ears to hear that kind of thing, and I know that those kinds of ears are miracles. I know it's not as simple as being committed to either life or death, but I know that there is still breath in both of our lungs, so while there's still time to say it, please stay. Stay for the wedding. I swear the first glimpse of her rounding the corner like a dream transforms you into nothing and everything all at the same time. Stay for the reception, for toasts from friends whose lives are better off with you, but willing to subject themselves to the small deaths that all of us experience when we have to forego our jealousy and let the lover in. Stay for the wedding night, all awkward and glorious and vulnerable and naked and unashamed and painful and empty and full and imperfect and absolutely perfect like the dichotomies you are and always have been, like to becoming something else. Stay for the fights. They're devastating and necessary, and if you're able to temper the moment, then I will be the lightning rod you'll need to strike over a cup of bad, overpriced coffee at 4 a.m. when the couch springs are stabbing you in the back, or simply stabbing you back. I won't say a word unless you want me to. Stay for forgiveness in the morning, after the sun has gone down on your anger or your sadness or your wanton abandon, and mercy still finds you when he peeks his head over the mountains to the east. Stay for every memory will embellish around the dinner table until it becomes legend, not quite the way it happened, but certainly not a lie. Memorialized and floral, the way that fiction gets at truths like laughter when we tell the stories year after year, and they grow, and we're all sure that, yes, as a matter of fact, it did rain literal cats and dogs during our darkest nights, and we thought that God was gory, but they're all grace now, and life is movement, and we are healing and breaking and making and being made all of the time. This coffee tastes like the bad action movies that my dad used to love. I imagine him whose absence I feel every time DC introduces another Clark Kent who will never quite be Christopher Reeves, gulping this mud down and calling it something absurd, like delicious, had he accepted the invitation to stay. Like the way I loved to help him light the pilot beneath the hot water heater in the house we grew up in. Legend. She needs you. He needs you. They need you. We need you. I need you. Please stay. Find what you were made for. I just had the most god-awful cup of coffee I've ever had in my life. You've got to try it. It's all worth living for. It tastes like a morning liturgy and my great-grandfather's high fives. Don't forget that there are voices on the outside of your head, too, and they sound like futures, and carrying the love that you told me about through the front door of your home together, and hopes, and camping with your friends, making you eat the worm at the bottom of some mez cow bottle that you didn't care for, and dreams, and hiking the blue trail through coastal towns in northern Italy and stopping for bread and wine that costs less than water and music and tucking your daughter into bed at night the first time she moves out of your room and into her big girl bed and love and parking tickets and love and replacing light bulbs in the bathroom and love and the promotion you've been working toward and love and being let go and love and holding your friends close when they're breaking into pieces and love and and friends holding you close when you're breaking into pieces and love and atrocious cups of coffee and everything that we have to tell one another about where we came from and where we want to go and love and all of the help needed to get there and love and being loved and love and love and love and love and love. 
I just drank the most god-awful cup of coffee that I have ever had in my life. Do you want to try some with me? <laughs>